It's just before four o'clock in the morning. The bed is slightly dishevelled, but I'm here. Oh, I think the car door's noisy. I'm here. I've got a brew on the go. The birds are going to start their dawn course. Fingers crossed. I can actually catch you guys some fish. Long time since I've been. Four o'clock in the morning at dawn. Listening to the dawn chorus. Brings back Bemi many memories of tench fishing trips. I'm hoping today I might be able to find a gold tench for you. Gold M tench. First, let's hope this doesn't set light to the grass. Oh, I can have a decent cup of tea. Wow. Barely enough light to see anything, and this is a low light camera. I thought there might be some creatures around this morning. I think, I think the only creature around is me. Mist just coming off the water. I'm going to be fishing right down here show you when I'm here. Oh, I heard a little fish then. Oh, it's cold at dawn, isn't it, eh? Oh, dear me. Don't, don't do this tench fishing too often like I used to. Am I older? And I think it's colder. We threw a bit of bait. Oh, a fish moving under that tree. I'm fancying a piece of floating crust under this tree. There's my little fishing platform and down the bottom here so chuck some bait in there see a little bit of shaky water just down here just just moving like that where they see me walk up wow that is an English lake setting at dawn mist rising off the top just listening to the birds quietly and waiting for the kettle to explode. Oh, oh yes please, yes please. Too dark to see the float for a minute, but oh whistle of the kettle. Oh. Let's go, let's go, tea. Wow. Oh. You see how they invented the steam engine? Well, it's taken me a while to get uh, myself organised, it's about 20 past four. I'm awake now. I've got my gear down in the swing, underneath the willows. Chucked a bait out to the right and to the left, popping up. I've never fished this uh, with a float before. Previously I fished it was just, just sort of packing up and uh, fishing up on top. The car. I've already scattered some bread around. It's going, but I don't think they're carp. I think they might be rud. They could be some decent sized rud, I'm not sure. I just hear vague drone of the uh, motorway traffic. Well, it's perfect, but it's never that perfect, is it, in the UK? Never too far for some noise. Ooh. Did you guys hear that? That's a better, that was a better fish. I'm wondering if I'll get rigged up first, put my old bread in. Throw the ground right in. Just barely would see a float now, but let's get set up anyway. Oh yeah, there's a fish, I've seen enough. I've just seen another one move. Let's switch this off before I get rigged up.
Right, I'm going to keep the uh, Avon rod here. This is stuff. Fishes. Scoffing the uh, bread round the corner here. Looks like the tide's high anyway. I've got the float out there, so I... Oh, I had the float out. I'm in a snag. Well, not a good start. I'm in a branch, I'm a stumpy in a branch, look at that. Great big branch I've ground baited up in. <laughs> oh, I can't believe that. I might have to fish a swim down here. <laughs> Is that a fish in there? Oh, well, I'm branching out anyway. So I've ground baited on the end there, and it's right. <laughs> the ground bait must have gone in here. Good start. Right, oh, I'm breaking up bits and pieces of bread. Throwing it, because I've got ground bait down there. There is fish moving down there, but they're very, very touchy on the bread. I wonder if they're actually not carp, they're actually rad. That's what I'm sort of thinking. Hmm, that mist coming off. Now I've got to be careful in here because there are a few, very, very few grass carp. But they ain't five and six pounders. They're big ones. I think, mostly well, they're double figures. Yeah, there's rudder or something taken there. Oh, that's quite a bit of bread out there anyway. Let's get this float out. This is what I'm using, I've got the match rod. I normally fish a hook link, I've gone straight through. I've already lost my shot off of that. Oh, it slid down one or the other. Barber's hook, and this is the float I'm using. Hopefully you guys see it in this dawn light mist. I don't know what this camera's like really in low light. The other one's really good, but this one's not so good. So there's my float set up. It's an antenna float. Very sensitive, grade it down, takes 3BB and I've got uh, like a number 8 shot just to take the worm down which I've got to be starting with worm because my target is tench, either regular green tench or golden tench would be nice just to show you people. And one of those little rubber float holders there so I can always change the bigger one if I want to go farther out. I can hit the farmer's tractor starting up. You can see those ripples in there. That tells me something's looking at that bread under that willow tree. Even way up there, look. I'm feeling I'm gonna pick a fish up underneath that willow. I'm basing up with a worm in the hope of a tench. I'm just watching these, because they might just be small carp, but you never know, they could be one of those giant grass carp. Look, I'm hearing looping all the time. I wonder how close, have I had the only branch? That's what I want to get. I'm wondering, I'll get a rod rest down there, I doubt it really, just to keep the rod up. I suppose I could put it on my ground bait bucket. Look, there's fish down there. There's definitely fish in there, but I can't do both. Oh, lift bite. There it goes, it goes, it goes. Oh, I pulled, what is that? Did I pull out? It's a perch. <laughs> Struck so hard again. It's a flying perch. That's undoubtedly which took me into that snag. Yeah, being a perch, you scoff the hook. Well, off the mark. So, on. I'm sort of between. Oh, I'm going to have to go for that fish in a minute. I'm sort of between uh, a rock and a hard place. Hello, oh, no, don't say it's going to be all small perch all the way on worm. Oh, how to catch a big perch then. This could, get, this could kill off the uh, tench chance for me. I'll have to go to bread. 
Well, there's my bait, a nice wiggly worm going out into the, the early morning mist. I should think the surface activity will, will close down here. That's my, as it gets, if it's going to be hot today, which look at it, I mean, steam coming off. Might have to hold this rod. Look at this fish in the corner there. Some form of carp. See, this is where you think a big perch would be around here somewhere. A couple of bubbles just came up. It's about a foot to the left of my float. I'm trying to keep it as still for you people as I can. That float, I just move the rod towards me and it just dips. It's so sensitive. That's an antenna float for beginners if they they want a very sensitive bite indication. Obviously, I'm going to get a bite and miss it in a minute because I'm looking around the corner all the time. Oh, that ain't a small perch. Is it? Is it? That's a strange old fight. That's a strange old fight, I know. Oh, it's a bream. Oh, that's all right. Here he comes, here he comes. Oh, nice bream. Right, see, I'm so low to the water here, guys, I can actually unhook this in the water. And look, that's a nice bream. Well, please. Piece of bread somebody's been using. Oh. Well, that's interesting. I'll persevere with the worm. Look, 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 fish on the top. I'm oh, straight on the worm again. Watch those trees up the top there, Graham. This is, there he goes. Two fish on the same bait, two different species. Do you reckon it's worth a third cast if I can drape this worm over the hook? I think so. Maybe it's going to be hard for the tench to move in if the other fish are in there. This is what matchmen do, they put a, a towel on there, makes a lot of sense. Okay, float settlers. Here we go, you see the antenna sinking slowly, so someone's having a look at it. Afraid just to bump it, don't be afraid to bump it. It's gone. And I missed it. <laughs> Nothing new there. Oh, hang on a minute, peeps. That was a fair old swirl there. I think I've got to put a piece of bread there for a minute. Hang on. Let's put the float rod away. A piece of floating crust which may or may not come off first cast. I haven't got the best crust, but I dip it once. Wow, it's a bit tight swinging under here. There's definitely a fish under there. I might as well sit down there. I can't quite. I don't think I'm going to see any fish. I'm just going to have to guess this. Creeping just over the edge here. Because I've got to get right into a sort of two foot pocket. And that's not it. The fish just right by that bush. I've got to go for that, I guess. Right in there. I did it all coming up in this ditch area. There's the swirl to the right. I just can't get in there without sort of falling in. Well, again, the bed's got a bit of weight to it now. And that's about as close as I dare. Close as I dare get. Oh, I missed him. I missed him. Look at the swell. Oh, I missed him. Floater fishing, eh? It's addictive. Just going to swing it out, try him again. 
Oh God, that's right in the honey hole. <clears throat> that might be a one-way ticket. Got the line across my fingers as well. He's going to have to take that um, pretty confidently. I can mess around with these carp like forever. The trouble is, when the sun comes up, which it looks like it's coming around here, the sun hits the water, that could shut the tent's chance down. <clears throat> so I can play with those later. But I think also it'd be better off baiting quite a bit more bread closer in here and try and draw those fish out. Do I put more bait in? I just keep putting bread out and I've got the float berry. I think this would be a... Let's move that out of the way. This probably be a small carp. I may be wrong. It could be Mr. Tench. It's a Tench. Oh, oh yes, please. Nice little Tench. Come here, buddy. And he's gone. Might even get to use the worm again. Well, target species one achieved. That's target species one achieved. Which is nice. I wonder, am I going to get a golden tench? Well, another tench, another fine tench in the net there, guys. On the worm. I mean, it's some fabulous fishing. Look, not monster fish, I realise that, but it's the principle of fishing with a float in English countryside. Catching. Look, fish like this. Wowee. Nice to get some action. Back he goes. I left the, I left the rod in while I unhooked that tench. <laughs> Look what's happened. A perch, a perch took it. A perch has taken the bait that I just dropped down while I was unhooking the tench. That's how mad it is. The secret lake. Here we go, Mr. Perch. I'm just going to drop it over the side there while, I, <laughs> while I'm sorting myself out. The float's right there, people. Look, there's the float. <laughs> it's going to go. It's going to go. I'm telling you. Let me zoom in. There he goes, look, look. It's on the bottom. Probably won't get attention there. 
you can see all the uh, sort of scum and willow blossom that's blowing on the water is going to cause me problems float fishing it's like if I pull back you'll see it it's everywhere bits of willow blossom coming off all right let's get the float back out there again On again trying to move the other rod. I've got a feeling this might be another tench. Well he's pulling. He's covering some ground. Oh no 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 don't go in there. What is that thing? There's got to be another tench. Definitely, definitely, there's another tench. Wowie. In you come. I can get him there. See, a lovely green tench. So they're on the feed now. This is why I got up at four in the morning. I just had a lift bite on the float, it just came up a little bit. What a big worm, and if you've got worm on, you want to absolutely uh, just pause a second before you strike. Because it's the biggest bait, they could have one end of the worm or the other. There it goes, and a strike, and lose it. Well, it's a little bit too quick on that one. Let's try them again. I'm not going to put too much bait in there. Wow, there must be fish. It, that went straight down and back up again. It's a fish taking the worm on the drop. Holy cow, that was the biggest fish there. It took crust off the top. I just got, I am not even got a rod in, I've just got some bread there, just to see if something would come in. That was a decent sized fish. There he goes. On. Feels like a perch. What is that? Oh my god, it's a gudgeon. I can't tell you how many years it is since I've caught one of those. And as a kid, we call them all the time. Look at that. A gudgeon. My god, that's a rarity. In an English setting like this with mist rising off and on the float. A strangling great worm on a size 10. I don't think I need to put any more bait out there. Well, it tells me I'm on the bottom. Tench and Gudgeon are both bottom feeding fish. The bread in here has gone quiet, so obviously early doors was good on the bread, but I missed my chance. What was some, see, they come up, take one piece of bread, then they're gone again. Another swirl over there, then they're gone again. There's the float going. And I'm on. Purchase time. There's a lot of fish out there. And they are not shy. There's four other guys going to turn up this morning. I think about seven o'clock, so I've probably got to get a little bit farther out. Get out there. 
<clears throat> probably got a couple of hours of absolute peace and tranquility and the chance of the golden tench. Something gargantuan on people. A big, big fish. A carp, I'd say. I suppose it had to be a matter of time before the carp move in on me. But the match rod is taking on an untold curve. It's got to be a carp. Oh, oh. What a good job I didn't put a hook link on. And I just stuck with the... Uh, <laughs> look at that, look at that. The frog looks like he's about to implode. Floats out the water, but check that drag, Graham. Overcook it. Wowee, that rod's as much as it can take. 100% as a carp. Funny kicking with it. No, it's not one of those grass carp. I'm overcooking it. Oh. Might just be a nice. Oh, I'm up to the float, can't do any more now. I'd like to see him. Oh, nice swell. Nice swell. Feels like it's sort of foul hooked. See what it's dig, 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 dig. No, it's just a sort of five pounder, I guess. But I'll tell you what, he is absolutely going crackers. Oh, what is that? Water snake on the surface? Oh, is this not, oh, it's a, is this not a barbel, I hope, is it? That looked really, really, and that's why he's going. I reckon this is a decent barbel. No, it's a car. I have had a still water barbel here before. Come on, Rod. Perch, tench, or oh, roach. Nearly, nearly a carp. And a, and a carp. He's in, he's out, he's in. Not bad, is it, eh? Not bad fishing with a float. Not bad fishing in this setting with a float. There we go. That's a lovely look at that one, isn't it? What a scrapper. What a scrapper. Water's so warm, thank goodness. I was sea fishing yesterday and the actual sea has taken a long time to warm up this year. What did I have? Six congas, hooked ten conga. Had six conga. A black bream and some doggies. And within a matter of 12 hours I'm catching tench, carp, roach. That is what it's about, all round fishing. Sun's just hit over there, can you see? Shaft of sun just over there. Haven't got long before the tench window is going to be closing. I'm going to try a piece of bread flake and see if that gets me away from the perch. I don't have many worms left. So let's just try a piece of bread. Of course, the benefit being that the uh, tench, should they be in there still, will take bread. They're certainly taking the uh, the worm avidly. A little bit of crust over there that's been taken. There goes the float. There goes the float. That could be a bream, but bream generally like worms, as do the tench. If I was tench fishing, it would be worm and double red maggot, small branding double red maggot. That would be my uh, choice, legend or float. Well, that slowed up the bites by going to bread, mostly from the perch. I tried caster, put about four or five casters, and I was getting bites there, but I'm going to save them because I had some maggots. I'll just show you what they go like. You can hear them. They've gone almost. I don't know whether they sink. No, they sink. They're just on, on casters. They will turn even quicker today. 
once the sun gets up. Immediately, bread flakes got rid of the worms, but it's also got rid of the tench. I've gone back to the worm, and I fear Perch City. I missed that one totally. So the bread, that didn't work. Quite a bit of bread out there. And it's got a lot of scum and leaves and stuff on the surface, so where's my float? Never be afraid to bump that float every once in a while. With that mist going across here. It's quite cool, I mean, allegedly the middle of summer, no doubt, no doubt it's going to be hot. It normally tells you that the air is colder than the water. A nice big perch would really settle the morning down, a dawn session anyway. I'm going to bump that. Yeah, never be afraid, afraid to uh, bump the float. That just movement might um, attract a fish. Do you know what, I think I'm going to have to put some more bait in there. I've got a feeling there's that many fish here, they've eaten it all. There's the sun just hitting the first of the water. Can you see over by those lilies on the far bank? So it's eventually going to creep my way and come a shaft of light right down uh, the centre of the lake, hit that tree, and that probably, probably shut most of the tench off. I'm going to chuck a bit of ground bait on the inside because I baited that swim as well. Missed another bite. Yes, had the worm off. I'm going to leave that little tip on there. Um, Got a bit of ground bait that was in the freezer. So what I do is I left over ground bait, I just put it in a plastic bag and freeze it. If I just bait a bit of that up there close, I should actually have a cast in there. Might just keep them. God, that broke the float, that one. Let's move our breast back. I'm just trying down in here with the float. See if there is any fish close in. Even float fishing, I still keep my finger over the line just in case anything pulls tight, I miss something. I can feel just here the fish take the bait. The sun is a coming, it's now on the water, there's the first shaft of light. It's like being a prophet of doom for tench fishermen. They will take in the sunlight for about half an hour in a, in a sort of shallow estate type lake. But I find they do shut down. I think most tench fishermen, traditional float fishermen by lilies, that sort of thing. So the lilies only grow to about four feet of depth. They don't grow in like 20 feet of water. No, no bites there. Right, go back to the willow tree swim. Yeah, and of course, you would fish about where that shaft of light is. You guys might not see it with this camera, but you'd be fishing about five feet away from the lilies. And then as the sun came on to them, I would tend to fish, or myself and the people I used to fish with would go closer and closer to the lilies as the sun came up because the fish would slightly retreat under them into the shade. Here I've got this tree, but the, the, the light's coming, gonna come from the left as the bite. And I missed the fish. Okay, there's a lot of rubbish on the surface. I think it's willow blossom mostly, so it's going to make float fishing pretty tricky. Might actually go to a quiver tip later on. Oh, I could fish again, guys. No sign of the golden tench. Oh, I'm figuring this is not a perch, there's a tench. Is it? No, it's a roach. I'm nearly a netter. That's a nice roach. Oh, 
Actually, is that a roach? What do you think, guys? Or is that a hybrid? It's got a sort of funny shape about it, hasn't it? Yeah, but that down is a funny one. Well, the other two guys are turned up over there now. Fishing. Just starting. You can see the sun's just, just clipping that willow tree right here. Right where I am and I've hooked up again. But it's definitely a carp, it's not a tench. I'm just not getting any luck around there on the floating crust. But my goodness me, the action on this float rod is pretty amazing and acceptable. Or I should think I haven't got long left. I may be wrong, but you see the light on the willow? It's just coming across here. It's lit up all the rest of the lake, so I'm lucky to be on the shadow side of the lake and hooked up to a nice fish. Definitely, definitely going to be a carp, this one, I feel. Yeah, there he is. That's a common carp on the worm. Very, very fat one. Look at that. Butte. Good scrapper. Nice big, big tail on him. Away he goes. Might even have got the worm back. I just feel there's a big fish under that willow tree. Just feel it might be a grass carp. He's not coming up with any regularity there. <laughs> Float was down there, guys. It was just absolutely in front of me. In fact, you know what? I think I might, just for a bit of fun, bait a little area up in there. Why not? a bit of fun, but just down there. Just bait that up, sort of forget about it, and then come back to it. Oh, I'm going to have another mix up because what's happened here, you can see this quite easily, the, the wind has picked right up. It's not rough, there's big storms coming in tonight apparently. So the wind's moved all that blossom down there, but it's also taken the carps with it, I think. So I'm gonna put some different bait in here. So I've just been using regular ground bait in there. We're gonna be trying some of the old matchman stuff. Now what you gotta do is you gotta get this uh, activated coarse pellets. What size are they? They are two mil. I've used these before. Might as well have a lot in there. This one is called a margin mix. It's got pictures of roach, bream, tension, carp, so I know I'm going to catch every one of those with this stuff. I basically have run out of worms, guys. Okay, I've got no worms on. You saw how many fish I caught on worms. It smells a bit peculiar, isn't it? Let's get a load of that in there as well. Get it in there. Now, Dave told me in the tackle shop at uh, Berry Hill Fisheries that the best way to do this is by getting a separate bait container and mixing your flavouring which in this case is strawberry you're going to put a bit of strawberry in there so I'm going to have to go to casters and or small bits of bread in a minute because I've got no bait he said get another water can canister i.e. a bait container dilute this first in there and then put the water in otherwise I put this in it's just a little gobby mess so what he's saying is get the old jollop here oh god why me oh well, there it is put your juicy stuff in there if it'll come out put a Drill up your flavour and colour. This is all I've been told. So we've got that in there. This is more for putting on the, the boilies, I know. I realise that. But I'm only going by what Dave said. Mix it all up. And then put that over your ground bait. Mix it all up. 
let it soak. The thing with these pellets, he says, is let it soak. I'm no matchman. I just go fishing. I just catch fish. They throw themselves on the hook every now and then. So they're happy days. There we go. And let that soak up. I'm going to keep that juice in case I want to mix some more up. That can all stay. Got some of these pop-ups I might try later on. I don't know what to do with it. I'll try and drift a piece of crust down there now, I think. If I could just float a piece of crust down there. It's gone very quiet. I've got hardly any bread left either. Or not what I've got in there. I've got some leftover frozen hemp. Put it in with the ground bait. Let's mix all that up. Gonna have such a feed, aren't they? I don't know whether to kill them off or cure them or get them going. Hopefully, get them going. So, I'm gonna let that soak for a few minutes because it's got that activated pellet in there. It's got a bit of ground bait here. Which is leftover frozen stuff. Goodness me, that's been spoiled for choice. You can see how that's, other than the small fish, that's died right off, right off. So it's probably going to be a struggle now with this bright sun. But nice for float fishing now, it's drifted all that willow blossom down, but it's taken my bread with it and they've eaten all the bread, I think. Got a different fish on this time, boys. I've had a load of perch. It's either a chub. Well, I'm wondering, is that? That looks like a chub, isn't it? I thought it might be a baby grass cart. But there you go. It's only a small one, but it is indeed a chub. Well, there's all, got to be almost everything in this uh, in this little lake. Stand it up for this one, people. This is a good fish. I thought I saw it being as a bream. Probably a carp. Oh, it's digging, holding down there. That was on uh, double red maggots and a single caster. And I saw a very big carp come out in the middle. Take a piece of crust that did not have my hook attached to it. I'm guessing. Definitely, it's not a bream. It's the Godzilla of bream if it is. Carp, it's got to be. Digging like this. I saw the tail. Yeah, it's a carp. I'll sit down. I'll stand up because they were telling me some bream to about possibly six pounds in there, and I thought, ooh. No, it's amazing. It's a good scrapper. Good scrapper. Hell of a float fishing session, really. Just think how it was early on. All that mist coming off the uh, water over there. And the first shafts of light going across those lilies. And how it's changed now with the sun blazing. And still managing. Because I think, I, I think to be honest, that matchman's feed there possibly is keeping the fish going. He's not having it, this one. There he comes. Another common carp. He's in. He's in. What a good condition fish.
still catching the old bream. It slowed right up, and that was on maggots. Well, I've finally got, I think, either a, a, a rud that's got gold in it or a golden tent. Wouldn't it be nice? It's on maggots, so I've got no worms at all. There's a tiny weeny golden hen. Well, that's something you don't see very often. I'm pleased to catch one having caught five I've had now. Regular tench. And just check out the colours on this one. That's the golden tench. They do grow quite big, not as big as the green ones, I don't think, but what a fantastic looking fish. And they've only got black dots on their tail. Sometimes they have black, black dots over them, but that's a pretty fish, is it not? Lovely. Back you go, buddy. Just tip it back, he wants out, there he goes. And away. Oh, he's caught in the net, that's it. Wow, I've had a good session. No question of that. Not even a session, half, half, a, not even, yeah, half a day considering I've got up at four. It's midday now, it's really, really hot. It's so nice to come in here into this secluded, shaded area. So I'm gonna use the last little bit of bait I've got up just ha having to go under that willow tree where there is some shade on the water. So you can see this willow here is throwing a good bit of shade in there. So I think if I go down here on the platform, and just margin fish out there and just see what's out there, use the last of my bait, might get lucky. that swim never really did come alive. And listen, one o'clock on a hot summer's afternoon, what can you expect? But boy, did I do the right thing by getting up at four o'clock, even if I was sleeping in the car, sort of sleeping. Anyway, we'll see you guys in the next program. Keep watching, we'll do our best to catch a few fish for you. Hopefully I can do the same as I've done in this one, and that's fish all day on a boat, drive across the countryside, four hours sleep in a car, Another half day float fishing to get two films at about 36 hours. But I'm a bit cream cracking. And what a place to fish. Peace, quiet, solitude and a float. It don't get no better than that. See you next time.